fish on, baby. Get in that boat. We are here, cold day, little snapper, little mangy, and we're doing some live shrimp, something you don't see us do often. But uh, we're in Tampa Bay. You know, as you guys probably know, this area got hit pretty hard. And a nice looking little, little mango snapper there. And so uh, we decided to do, we're doing a couple videos on how to catch fish with shrimp. And so we decided, hey, let's make a little day of it, a little podcast out of it. So Luke just, uh, we just started this little line of docks and uh, Luke got his, uh, this little shrimp snagged, snaked, I should Not say. Snagged, yeah, snaked so. from a, probably a little pinfish. I'm gonna go back and get a new one. So if you're tuning in, we're dock fishing. And, uh, we're in what? Six feet of water? Yep. You just get something, Luke? Yeah, something got me. Still have my shrimp on, so we'll see if we can get revenge on them. And one of the few times that you won't hear us talk about Slam Shady and Dr. Juice. So all we're doing is we pinch the tail off, gets a little bit of uh, extra juice flowing, go out the bottom, up through here, so it looks like yay. Then you take the little size one or one out hook, put on the size of your shrimp, and it kind of goes weedless. You can see it right there, probably pretty well. And then you got the little bullet weight, so one fourth. And you're set. 20, 30 pound mono, just depending on really how much structure you got. I got something. Looks on something. I got a little snapper. So this is just using that little that little shrimp rig. Get down in the docks with the shrimp. This is going to be the most common catch right here is mango snapper. They're all they love getting up around docks. Ugh. Docks with with some current flow. Oop, see if we can get get that oh. shrimp back. Oh, oh, Joe just lost one. So a little little fella. Don't get your hand. Don't get your fingers in their mouth. That's going to hurt. Let that guy go. Let's see if we can recycle this one and catch another uh, yeah, one. Yeah, there's a bunch more little snappers. Usually when you find a dock with one, there's going to be many more. So just get down there near oh. the pilings. And uh, let it sit and you'll feel it. Yeah, Joe's, Joe's getting hammered over there. <laughs> no, he's an aggressive little, little snapper. Fish. Here we go. Ah, oh, dang. All right, I'm going one more. These things are so much fun. It's just fun for the whole family. And you could do it. Any type of boat, kayak. Uh, see if I can get one more. No, he's not coming back for more. So much fun. Got to re uh, reapply. It's been weird. I mean, this area just got destroyed by the red tide, and now it's like so stinking clear. And as much as we like clear water, it can also make it tough. As fish can see. There's anything down there on that one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so we're going to be working on a, um, a three part series for Freedom Boat Club owners. Watch, we got a, a buoy right underneath us here. Yeah, that's all right. In the troll motor. Uh, that seems to be something that's come up a lot with our audience and even new insider members are um, either new boat owners and you just either can't afford a troll motor or part of Freedom Boat Club seems to be one of the whoa, one of the bigger trends. So we're like, hey, let's do a little three-part series. One, we'll probably do something similar to this. Maybe go up to a bridge or some docks and uh, and just fish the heck out of it with an old school anchor. Yep, they still make those things. And then the other ones, we'll probably just take some artificial lures and go hit some some flats. You know, right now this is a great time to be targeting any kind of area where a, a channel meets a flat. And you sit there and throw some slam shadies around, power prawns as well, anything you can pop off the bottom, you're gonna catch some fish if there's some moving water. Whoop, dropping my, my scream. Even with this tail cut off, he still wants to squirm. So I'm excited about that, uh, just because I know that's going to help so many people that that have access to a boat right now and don't have a troll motor. And just because you don't have a troll motor doesn't mean you can't catch a lot of fish. 
and we did it once. So I guess we did it twice. We uh, we went out in Freedom Boat Clubs boats and uh, and film with Captain Will, who uh, was working at Freedom Boat Club at the time. We had a great day. Trout galore. Just mess with me down there. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. What would a good brother do is go right there behind. Oh, almost too good of a cast, really. Let it sit down there. A lot of times just kind of drag it along the bottom. And don't set the hook when you feel the little small guys. It's a guaranteed way to lose your bait. Woo. And if you're listening and you're not looking, we, uh, we're a little bit cold this morning. We got our, our warmer gear on. It was frigid. I don't like it when it's 50 degrees out when you start fishing. But it's also a great time to go fish because once you find them, they're usually in there together. Right there, Lukey? Oh yeah. Yeah, this is fun. You just never know what you're gonna catch. Every, every cast is different. It could be a little tiny, little snapper like we were catching. It could be a giant, you know, overslot snook or big redfish. And you also get some big hits from these grouper down here too. To be sitting on these pilings. That's so much fun. But what it almost guarantees, close to guarantees, is that you will not catch nothing. Right? This is the the best way just to go out and just have some tight lines. Sorry, I didn't see it right there. And when the water's clear like this, you can uh oh looks on something. Uh, a little a little snapper. Oh, I'm on two. Oh, I oh. lost mine. Dang. So this you can is also a good, find great, uh, great structure. This is the bad thing about this smart trolling. Whoa, whoa, watch out there, bird. Easy. <laughs> Easy smart trolling motors that you can accidentally hit a button. The motor is starting to go up on us. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can find structure and, and know some good places to go to next time. There we go. Oh, yeah. So what do we say? Once you find one, you're usually gonna find a few more. It's a little bit better one. Whoa, Pretty sorry nice. there, cameraman. Am I getting you wet? Let's release him away from this bird. Oh, look at that stinking bird. Yeah, another nice thing pilot. about clear water is you can see where the bird goes. If I can get this sucker out here, this guy nailed this hook. So he was hungry. Hold on, buddy. I'm going to get you without having to get my fingers in your... Dang. It's going to be uh, pliers. Let's do more damage back there. Yeah, I just got another cast up. I had a little bit of bait left over, so I... Oh, yeah, look at that bird. Just got, just got one. Rascal. So I uh, had another little... A little bit of that bait left, so I threw it back in there and just got stuff another one. There we go. Whew. Right, now we got a... This little snapper fun though. Yeah. Get a little bit bigger before you can start uh, taking them home. Yeah, you just want to you just want to sit there and wait to, to feel for the, the actual thump. There's a lot of fish down there, a lot of small stuff, like pinfish and smaller snapper. They'll be just tapping at it, tap, 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 and then you'll feel that thump in your liner, you can feel a little bit of weight, that's when you want to set the hook. We're, right now we're using J hooks, so we're setting the hook. You could also use uh, circle hooks, and that works great too. In that case, just don't set the hook, just reel down. But, uh, so some exciting news on the tackle. We, uh, depending on when you actually uh, hear this slash see it, we've had a ton of people asking about the 100 packs for more of our lures. You know, we've had the 100 pack of the Slam Shitty 2.0 for a long time. And now we just released the 100 pack of Alabama Leprechaun and the Slam Shitty Bomber. And we'll probably have some more as, uh, as well. Everything is taking longer. And I'm sure we're all sick and tired of hearing that, uh, but it's the truth. And uh, we finally got a bunch of loose ones in that we can start packing into the, ooh, into the 100 packs. So those are gonna go fast. Slam Shitty, look at my little rod tip, just pop, pop, pop. Those are little small fish. Slam Shady Bama and the Leprechaun. And then we got, we got some new lures coming too that we're real excited about. 
you know, Fred has been a really popular color. That's that pink. And that's in, uh, in a paddle tail. Oh, sorry, loop, loops on. Oh, we're both on. Bunch oh, of snapper missed, down there. I just missed a nice one. That's got a nice little color to it. Let's see if I got my, oh yeah, I got Rob. All right, let's stay here. I think this has got a few more. But we're gonna have Fred the Jerk. So Fred the, Little we're fella. trying to come up with a name. We're like, whoa, it's a jerk, it's Chad. Some, get some teeth on that guy too. You do not want to get your fingers stuck in that bad boy. In the color Fred, so Fred the Jerk it is. See, we'll have some fun. Here's a little small guy. Just gonna pinch that into the tail off. Throw it out there, get some scent going. So far, what, four? So little mangies in a short amount of time. So much fun. There it is. The old weedless shrimp rig. Good shot. And I mean, look how close we are. I mean, these docks, the good thing about docks like this, and they're used to a lot of boat traffic. So these fish aren't, it's not like on a shallow flat where they're all freaking out and they're long gone. They'll stay there. You give them a, presentation like a live shrimp and they will hit it oh we're yeah, it doesn't have to be live shrimp though frozen shrimp works great too it's yep just get some natural scent down there oh. and hold on man there is a bunch of little <laughs> small guys dang there we are that one uh oh i like that sound uh, another little small there's gonna be some big ones in there. Sometimes you have to weed through them. A lot of times the bigger ones hang on the deeper side of the dock, which is why we're pretty much just hitting the deeper sides, but getting a little bit bigger still, still not even close to being keeper, but still fun. Yep, and in terms of, you know, these docks, um, deeper the better kind of, and uh, in most cases, Structure, it's gonna be critical, obviously dock structure, but you're looking for anything else. I mean, old docks that have maybe some old pilings. I mean, some of these old cement structures, you know, that are, I mean, you, you wouldn't want to stand on it, but it looks great to fish. Uh, they hold a ton of fish down there. And um, you can see right here, I mean, look at all the growth. That is a lot of life on the side of that dock, on those pilings. And those are all, man, doggone, I'm getting robbed. Those are all good signs. Someone's doing a nice little rebuild there. I like that. Got to send them back a few hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Cost to build right now I'm is sure so crazy. But then again, we'll probably be saying the same thing in five years from now. There's Everybody wants to come to Florida. Probably the best place in the world to live right there now. There are just an absolute ton of fish down there. Yeah, we'll go to uh, the next one. I saw a couple chasing the tail end of mine up. Yeah, All right, let me get that shrimp out. back. I love when you get the shrimp back. Oops, sorry. Dude. All right, got the shrimp back. We'll let this guy go, and then we're going to go on to the other dock. Some jumbos in there. So how many shrimp did you buy? It's got three dozen. Yeah, it's a baker's dozen there, Bap. It's a baker's dozen. Some uh, real big changes to the community, to the insider community. I cannot wait for you guys to see it. Nick, our boy who's our head engineer in charge of all of IT and technology. And that guy has been working around the clock with uh, a couple other designers that we've kind of got on part time. And uh, we know that thing needed a facelift and we're just going, we're going for it full on facelift. It is going to look and feel awesome. Like a real app slash, you know, site should. You'll, uh, you'll, you'll see the changes in January. It, uh, everything takes longer than you would hope, but man, it's gonna be so worth it. Oh man, you see the, my rod tip there? Look at that. There we go. Finally. Felt the thump. There you go. Barely got him hooked. It's kind of like release nice and quick. 
say that. Got one, Luke? I just lost him. Got Rob. That was a, uh, a good dock. That's what you do. File that away in the old memory brink. Diary, whatever you keep. Knowing that there's probably some structure down there. It's holding that many snapper. And you come out of different tides and, and times of day, times of year. And uh, usually if there's structure like that and there's that much bait, there'll be bigger fish. There'll be big grouper starting to show up, big snook, uh, depending on where you are. You know, redfish and trout. I did a little trip there in, in the Panhandle, Pensacola area. And, uh, you know, fish docks, rec residential docks look just like this and was blown away with how many nice redfish and trout were there. Whoa! Went a little bit too a little zesty on that one. Uh, but that was cool. Because I don't feel like we catch as many redfish and trout. It's more snook and, and grouper and snapper down here where we are. I was kind of, are you going to Pensacola pretty soon, Luke? For yeah, we party? have a meetup over there, up there in uh, Fort Walton Beach. It's gonna be, what are you guys doing? It was some with art too, Andy's putting it on? Yeah, one of the members, yeah, Andy Hong, is uh, putting together a fun, fun little get together. I can't wait. Oh, gonna, I just had a sheep's head fall all the way up. Oh, uh, sheep's head? Yeah, we're gonna uh, do some fishing up there, of course. And then he, uh, one of his family members has um, a business in the, uh, in the art industry. And so we're actually gonna have like, to have professional artists like come out and uh and really just show us how to ooh, there we go. got one it's gonna show us how to actually like make some legit legit fish art. art and i wanted that sheep said that thing followed me all the way up so what are you guys doing what are you doing art wise i missed up i'm not sure the details we'll just have artists there and it's gonna basically just uh help us do some sort of art and there's gonna be some some uh food and drinks involved it should be a good old time I just haven't, I haven't really done much fishing up there, so I'm looking forward to, uh, to getting up there and chasing some redfish and trout around. Yeah, this dock is looking really good. We have some good current flow. We have a lot of nice shade down there. And I'm just casting, I just cast it just up current. I'm letting it swing back down right at the piling. And so I'm basically right at the base of that piling right now. That's where the sheep's head usually are. I'm trying to get through all these snapper. Oh, Joe's got my line. There we are. I'm trying to get through all these snapper get a sheep's head no luck there but yeah basically the the key for the sheep's head is to get on the bottom right next to the pilings and it's not just the dock oh it looks like somebody actually might have robbed me dang it something robbed me and i didn't even know it these little base dealers are good the worst Ooh, come on baby and uh yeah working on new rod with mud hole crew just got back from doing their own custom rods and uh, that'll be that'll all be next year um, for those of you who are wondering like hey when are things gonna get better shipping wise uh, I don't know God, it's nuts the manufacturers don't know no one seems to know it um, it's been one of the most frustrating things as a, as a small business owner like you know how do you even manage inventory and how do you try to forecast when you don't know how long things are taken it's a um, it's been really tough but yeah no it, if you're sick and tired of it so are we um we have a lot of uh, it's a i mean well over a million dollars worth of orders as of right now as we're filming this that are literally just in limbo if you will we've put them out there we've uh we've we've done actually a pretty good job with forecasting and with gauging what we need, we just can't get the stuff. So we've, for those of you who think, oh man, these guys don't know how to order. <laughs> like we're doing the right job there. It's, uh, it's just incredibly tough when what normally would take four weeks is taken four months or, or 10 months. We have stuff that now goes back a full over a year. We have stuff that actually get an order that was originally paced in 2019 and we've gotten parts of it just not all of it. Isn't that nuts? I mean, how do you run a business when you put an order in 2019 thinking you're going to get something in a few months and all of a sudden 2022 is here or almost here and we still don't have the order complete. I mean, it's it's crazy. And the manufacturers don't like that either. They obviously, oh, oh was, that was a nicer one there. I was about to say, you should get hammered right there. I was, uh, I was just in there and got... Uh, 
You got something you on You know, they're, they're not making money if, if, uh, if their stuff's not getting shipped out either. So it's, it, it's tough. I, I, I was listening to a podcast this morning time, about... Time to get time to piece up the shrimp. We're, we don't have many left. Oh. Piecemeal? Yeah, give me a little piece of that one, though. Yeah. Um, but he was saying it, it's probably going to be 8 to 12 months before this kind of gets fixed, if you will. Um, and, and a lot of it's just... it's, You know, we had, we had a lockdown, as you all know. And everyone in the homes, you know, consumerism went down i mean it, it all time low for uh you know at least for the last couple of decades of people actually buying stuff and then all of a sudden you know the government pumps um you know a few trillion dollars into the economy it gives a lot of people a lot of reasons to start buying stuff and we kind of kind of turned the economy back on again and now everything and, and because of that everything else was getting slow to slow to turn back on in terms of you know most of the stuff sadly is made in china and it's got to get shipped over. And now they're having trouble getting enough people to come back to want to be working the shipyards and unloading ships and driving trucks. And so there's just like massive backlog of, uh, of really ships and, uh, and containers sitting out there. And China can't keep up. They're having, you see that, like the electrical issues and stuff? It's absolutely that. nuts. Like where they're having to like ration off electricity in certain provinces. And this dock is loaded with some fish. Yeah, there's a bunch of fish down there. Here, give me another little piece of that. So if you're listening, we are now having to take little bits and pieces, still keeping the same little, what is this, an eagle claw? Yep, little eagle claw J-hook. Little inexpensive hook. It's got a little offset to it, and, uh, man, it does the job. Still go weedless with it. This looks like that. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, no longer, no longer weedless with the chunks. At least not as weedless. I got now my we weedless. Don't, you got yours. Where are you so going? I'm going right there. Something's robbed me. Underhand pitch right For, there. Oh. Been robbed three times right there. If that doesn't catch one, I don't know what will. You know, when you uh, make that cast, with, you're like, all right, that's they're, it. They're messing with it. Yeah, I'm getting some little. Ooh. Oh, come on, something big. Love that. There. Sheep set though. Oh, you uh -huh. gotta be kidding me. Oh. oh, it took me down to the. Got on a rope or something? No, it just, it hit and uh, I went in the weeds. So I did not have that big of a fish one. Probably a little snapper. There's definitely a fish there. All right, let's try that again. All right, come on, baby. Now we gotta we gotta finish the podcast with catching grouper, sheep's head, something else. Looks like another snapper. Oh man! Almost doubled up. Getting bigger. Yeah, it's got a little bit more chunk to it. Oop. That one's a little bit better fish. What do you guys do? What's the what's the plans? Holidays, Christmas time. What do you guys want to see on future podcasts? What kind of fishing for next year? Because that's a big, you know, big part of what we're we're planning out. We just sent an insider um, survey. If you guys have filled it out, thank you. If you haven't, and you're an in, one of our twenty six thousand insider members, please do. It's it's us basically asking you what do you. What do you love? What you know? What are some things that we could add, and even what are some things we could maybe take away and uh, and change? We got some new fishing coaches coming, and uh, some new new tackle, obviously. So we'd love to hear feedback yeah, on. Yeah, on it's that. basically what helps us decide. You know, what kind of content to do, what to do more of, what to do less of, um, where to schedule ah. meetups, right? All sorts of stuff. Everything's on the table. Look at that guy's hair. It's, you gotta get a video of that, dude. It's flowing. <laughs> That's glorious. <laughs> That's what I aspire to. Dude, it could be you Let, next year, Luke. That's what I want. I wanna see Luke's hair looking like that in 2022. 
I'm not even mad about his wake. It was awesome. Thank you, Joel, for making sure we got that in. Kind of looked like, uh, who was it, Macho Man Randy Savage when I first saw him going by? <laughs> like a younger one. Macho Man Randy Savage. All right. All right, what do you want to see, Joel? What kind of content, huh? Huh? Keep on. Keep on? Maybe add some reefs and offshore. Ooh, reefs and offshore, huh? You liking the reefs, yes? I'm gonna go a little bit deeper and see if there's some sheeps or there. So I'd love to finish this off with a, with a sheep's head. Uh, so anyhow, um, you know, we, we put all these podcasts, depending on where you're watching, listening, on saltshore.com in the fishing tips section. And at the very bottom, you'll see a place to leave comments. And that's where we love to hear from you. But I, even better would be going to that survey in your inbox, if you're an Insider member, and filling that bad boy out. Because it's pretty detailed. And it's, it's asking some questions that are multiple choice, and many that are just wide open. Hey, give us some like honest feedback on how we can uh, improve, improve the experience, and give you guys some cool stuff. Um, a lot of tackle things we can't talk about just yet, but I'm really pumped on on that. Uh, just as fishing, we all love trying out new stuff, right? We all love trying out new rods, new reels, new line, new lures. Uh, we got a couple of of molds that that we own 100% that we've been designing now for the most of the year, and those will all be in, out in 2022. So, pumped. Um, I'm also pumped about just wintertime in general, man. I feel like every winter we always have pretty pretty killer trips. Yep. And a good yeah, time to little, explore some of those little back lakes and Yeah, I'm creeks. doing a lot of that. Even bringing out the fly rod, too. There's been some recommendations on fly fishing. So, I'll be bringing the fly rod out this winter. That's when it's the best sight fishing. The water's nice and clear. Fish on this on this sunny days in the middle of the day, they'll get up shallow. Thanks for some really fun sight fishing. I know there's some big fish down here. These small ones just are too fast to get at it. So I'll get this cast up here in the shadows, and it is not oh going to last very long. Oh boy, the shrimp head just went down in the crack. Oh, lovely. It's uh, that's like our second to last piece. Getting down to the wire here, kids. Come on. <laughs> oh, man. That'll work. Actually, I'll take a little pick of that. You see, you might have to lift the seat up. You got him. Nice. Good job, Lucas. There you go. Boy, Jake's always looking for good thumbnail picks. <laughs> See if that one makes the thumbnail or not. It's a big part of it uh, for new guys uh, aspiring to be YouTubers or whatever it might be, creating content. I mean, such a big part of it is getting a good, captivating, curiosity filled headline and, and a thumbnail most importantly because that's you know as we're looking through facebook and in any of our feeds you know it, you need to have something that grabs your attention and and the same point can't be misleading i think that's where some of these youtubers go wrong and they usually correct themselves because they realize people start leaving them pretty nasty messages but it needs to be congruent you know there's such thing as clickbait uh to get a click but it better be congruent it better not be a, a you know misleading and and uh but the story, the moral of the story is come up with really good pictures that grab attention. Oh, something just chased me up there. You're on to us, Lukey. Yep. Well, it doesn't really matter because we're down to the last ones. But other than that, uh, if you haven't joined us in the Insider Club, that's what we'd love to see you in there for, uh, for 2022. It's some really neat things coming. And you'll be able to lock in your uh, membership price for life. 
and get a couple little free gifts from us as well. And that's all at saltstrong.com. Uh, you can go to forward slash pricing or... Oh, oh that, like that was a better fish. That was the sheep's head there. Ooh, man. Or, uh, or just go right up to, to join the club. We'd, uh, we'd love to see you in there. For you current members, thank you guys so much. You're the rock foundation of the company. And we do anything for you. Let's see if I can get revenge on that guy. He, felt, he definitely felt me, but it was right on that far pile. I got down to the bottom before the snapper got it. Something bigger came up and just thumped it. All right. We got to end this on a good one, right? Yeah, I think I might have just blown it. Come on, cheapy. That was a big fish. Yeah, that'll be another thing we'll start doing more of here in the next, probably the next handful of podcasts. The sheep's head, you know, they they start coming in here in the in the winter. They start moving up these little canals, and heck, I mean, we caught a lot just in in Luke's little canal. Yeah, my favorite way to get them is with these little crab lures. So they, oh uh, yeah, it's a blast. For many years, I thought I didn't think that sheep's head even really ate lures, and this, right. there's a couple crab lures I found that they just dominate it. That's all that's left of it, Bob. That's all that's left. All right. We'll, we'll see if Luke can get one. Otherwise, we're going to wrap this bad boy up. And, uh, yeah, we appreciate uh, all the love, all the support. I hope you guys are enjoying these. I mean, these are truly on the water. This is what you have to deal with when it's cold, windy, um, red tide, whatever it is. And uh, we like to keep these unique from all the other fishing shows Ooh. out there that are super edited, tons of B-roll, and filled with a bunch of commercials and product placement. Um, I just, I don't know, I, I think there's too much of that. And which is why we want to do this, just real. Because I, I learned, even on the bass side, those, those two guys that, uh, that go do that, what are they called? Tactical? Tactical back. Uh, Bassin or something? Yeah, yep. Yeah, they're just real, they're out there. Hey, I had a crummy day, we got skunk. And uh, you know, unlike, a fishing show that takes them, you know, three days in many cases to film one 21 minute episode in a super produced, and they're fun. I, I'm not pooping on uh, fishing shows, but I don't think they're the best place to learn in most cases. A uh, great way to have a little bit of fun and see people catch some, some nice fish. Uh, but if you want to learn and see what, cause I, I think it can get you really frustrated, right? It's like looking at, at men's health and all you see is a bunch of ripped guys. Like, man, I can't get ripped like that. And what you don't know, like, most of them, they're Photoshopped. Uh, men and women. I mean, it's the same same way, and it could get frustrated sometimes. This is a real deal. Get your hands dirty. Make some dumb errors sometimes. Hey, you don't always catch the trophy fish every day. Yep. But it's always it's occasionally always worth you it. do catch them and you drop. Them. Yeah. <laughs> rhymes your department. Rhymes and Joe. All right, guys. Uh, look, any more? No. Uh, I, one I, I just shot? have like a, the the tail section, all the meats out of it. So this is, this is just a total this is hail, a, mary. A hail mary, as they say in yep. fishing. All we got left. No, nah, it's they're not getting fooled. All right, cool. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, hit us up. Go do that survey if you have, and if you have, thank you guys for the feedback. We're going through all of it, and uh, let us know what we can be doing in 2022. I know we're not there yet, unless you happen to be listening to this in 2022. Welcome to the future. Let us know how it is, and uh, but do leave us some comments. We love hearing uh, feedback on these podcasts. Joel, good job. Everyone else, peace. We out. Late. See ya. Woo.